open up the door. It's Dave. Who? Dave. D A V E. Dave. Right, man. Dave. Dave's not here. <laughs> I woke up a couple of days ago, and it was relatively cold for Florida. Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to be that guy. Yeah, cold is such a relative term when it comes to Florida because it tends to be a fairly moderate winter here. But it was cold enough that the Tesla reminded me that in cold weather it needs to turn the fan on to heat the batteries, to actually keep the batteries warm. And even though it wasn't that cold, it was a reminder that the batteries always have to be at a certain temperature in order to function efficiently. I did notice that overnight, even though the weather wasn't that cold, the heater had come on and the uh, batteries were depleted a little bit more than they typically would be overnight. I left the car sitting in the driveway and that temperature was enough to make the heaters come on and it caused the battery to drain more than it typically would for that period of time. So I found that really interesting. Then the warning came on and reminded me that I need to make sure that I'm thinking about my battery because the battery condition is important and the heaters have to run. Now I have noticed on the other side, when it's very warm here in Florida, and it does get very warm here during the summertime, I'll often hear the fans running on the car the same way to kind of keep the batteries cooler. And it's kind of an interesting thing that happens. And this is where the whole idea of preconditioning comes in because what happens with the battery is, the car's computer will regulate the temperature of the car to make sure that it's at the best point to accept a charge. Now, I have noticed in the past when I've driven and I didn't do preconditioning when I drove to a supercharger, the charging tended to be a little bit on the slow side. Now, typically the weather is very temperate here, so it's not so much of an issue, but I have noticed that it's been slow a couple of times when I've gone to supercharge without preconditioning. When I am driving and it preconditions the battery, it works really well and it's very efficient in terms of taking a charge. So in warm weather, that's always the case. Now in cold weather, I can't attest to what it does and how preconditioning works. But I did find this really interesting video where the guy went out in very cold temperature and actually took his car to a supercharger to see what would happen. And it turns out that if he had preconditioned it, it probably would have charged fairly quickly. But as you'll hear him talk about, the reality was that it didn't charge very quickly. It was using most of the energy it was receiving to turn the heaters on to warm the batteries. And that's a reminder that you should always be preconditioning your battery when you go for supercharging. If you use the functionality on the, on the dashboard and it tells you where you should stop the charge, you'll have the most efficient charge you can get. And it will look for charging that's going to match up with what you're doing and your distance and so forth and try to give you the best available route. And you can do a little bit of route planning where you can plan for fewer stops or less charging time or however, however you want to do it to try to maximize your trip. It is kind of interesting the way Tesla works that you actually spend the time to precondition the battery to make sure that it's at its optimal state to be able to charge efficiently. And I find that really, really intriguing. There was a lot of discussion over the, over the course of the winter, the early part of the winter, where people were talking about their cars and especially in cold weather, would a Tesla hold up? And that actually prompted me to start thinking about it a little bit in terms of the overall nature of the car and the way the batteries work and the heater works. And that's why this video was so interesting because it actually encapsulated it. This guy did a great job and I encourage you to go out and watch the entire video that he put together because it's really pretty well thought out. But I just found it interesting when I started to think about battery life because I don't see extremely cold weather, so I don't know. But people talk about the battery health not being so good or the battery life not being so good. And in my own small experience, my battery degraded more with cold weather than it did with warm weather. But was it enough to make a difference? For me, no. For someone else, maybe. So it's interesting to kind of keep track of that and understand how the battery works in colder weather. So we're getting five kilowatts right now from the charger, but you can see we're getting zero miles an hour, plus or minus. And that means nothing is going into the battery pack, but five kilowatts is going to the battery heating. And the way the Model 3 heats the battery pack is really super neat. It actually runs the front motor and rear motor as waste heat. So it runs them inefficiently, creating, I think, up to seven kilowatts, three and a half kilowatts each as waste heat. And then that'll go into the battery pack. But Wow, this thing is so frozen. We've plugged into a supercharger at 35% state of charge indicating we're only getting five kilowatts. That is amazing. And nothing is going into the battery. I mean, it hasn't even started to charge yet. So what time is it now? 8.13. We plugged in probably at 8.12, something like that. 
Let's see how long it takes. It has now been a full half hour and no energy has started to been added to the battery pack as of yet. Uh, two kilowatt hours have been delivered from the charger to the car. The supercharger is pretty much all but emptied out at the moment. And um, that's just so interesting to me. I didn't think it was gonna take a half hour to start charging. This is super cool. It really shows you the importance of on-route battery preconditioning. A little tip for a lot of new electric car owners or for people who may watch this video and think, hey, why is it taking so long for this car to charge? This is a very extreme case, something you'd never run into really in the real world. I'm just doing a test. Uh, for those who might be considering an electric car, I don't want to paint the picture that they're all perfect, but certainly with a car like this, you put in a trip, the car will automatically run the heater on the way to the charger. You plug in, you charge for 15 minutes and you go. Even in cold weather, you can see the station's empty by now. Everyone got in and out and superchargers, people are always in and out in waves, of course. So it'll be really interesting to see how long it'll take before it even starts accepting a charge, but just ripping seven kilowatts on the battery heater. And uh, yeah, no idea how long it'll take. Heating charge rate will increase once battery is warm. Next time, navigate to supercharger. <laughs> I love that it gives us all of the uh, rate limited by low battery temperature. Vehicles improving battery temperature to increase charge rate. Really nice that they give you all this data. Went from zero and then gave it 20 kilowatts. It didn't give it like eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It just went, here you go. The thing with that is I've noticed the same on regen. Regen just cuts everything. No regen, just the car free rolls in the morning. Yeah. And then it gives me, boom, a big brick of, of power. Mm -hmm. Let's jump in and see how it's doing. So there we go, charging up 26 kilowatts. And uh, the battery still got the snowflake, interestingly. So it took about four kilowatt hours of waste heat to start this thing uh, to get charging. Very, very cool. Again, it's only getting colder outside. It's uh, about minus 16 degrees Fahrenheit, according to the watch on my wrist here. Just insanely cold and uh, very impressed with how quickly this thing can heat up the battery pack. There's one last note I wanted to make about this battery heating, which is you can only charge as fast as your coldest item. So, or your coldest part of your pack. There's the story. That's the story, and I just found it really interesting that when you think about the whole idea of supercharging and the whole idea of using your battery efficiently, that becomes really important to make sure that you've got your battery in a good state. Now, speaking of batteries, I did have one other uh, comment I wanted to make, and this was about charging between 20 and 80% all the time. The science suggests that you should always keep your battery in that range. It's a lithium ion battery, and it performs the best when you charge it between those ranges. Now, does it absolutely mean that you have to charge it between those ranges? No. Tesla recommends that you only charge your battery to 100% when you're taking a long trip. And that's typically what I do, and I'll do that once in a while anyway, just as a matter of course, to charge it to 100%, but most of the time, I'll just leave it at something like 80% and just charge it up to that because it's much more efficient and it takes shorter times to charge to get to that point if I'm not taking that trip, and then I, I'm maximizing the battery life. But as I've mentioned in the past, one of the things you'll learn when you're using your car a lot is that Tesla does a very good job of managing the battery themselves. They do all the work in the background on the computer to figure out how to best manage the battery. And my belief is, I can't prove this of course, that they turn on and off cells when they're trying to charge them up to make sure that you're getting the most efficient charge all the time. So it really kind of sort of doesn't matter if you charge it to 100% or not. It's really what works best for you as the driver of the car. What's the easiest method for you to keep the car charged and how should you plan it? That's really up to you to decide. The 20 to 80% rule is sort of there just to help maintain the battery health, but how long will the battery last? Well, so far we've seen cars that were built in the early 2010s in that area that were the original cars that were built. And so far the battery health has not really degraded that much. Sure, a few percentage from people who talk about it, but not significantly. And Tesla does some good jobs of actually having a few extra cells in there so that if one goes bad, they actually switch to the other one. So you're not quite at the number of cells they say, it's actually a few more. Again, as far as I understand it. So it's kind of interesting that uh, Tesla does that and that way you're getting the maximum life out of your battery. So battery degra degradation is not something you see a lot in these cars because of the way that they use the energy and the, the way that they charge and discharge. 
You charging to 80% kind of helps the battery a bit, but it doesn't necessarily make or break the battery. It's, it's really the software that's making the control for you. You're just kind of helping a little bit by charging a little bit less. And the number of cycles that it goes through and how the energy passes into those particular uh, cells and those, those spaces, because remember the way the battery charges, it's the electrons flowing into like what looks like shelves basically and uh, filling in there. If you think about it from that perspective, the less you charge to 100%, the less it has to force things into those shelves and it makes it the battery a little more efficient and should increase the battery life a bit. So just something to consider. Well, there you go. That's my story for today, and I hope you've enjoyed it. What's your point, David?